This is the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose, where I strategize with business owners on how to grow and scale their businesses to hit their income goals. This is episode 283 of the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose. Today, I am speaking with Amy Katz of Veggie Save the Day about how to grow your online business with collaboration over competition. Amy was another one that I got to see in person at Tastemakers Conference. It was so good to see her. And she is truly the embodiment of of this topic because she believes so much in collaboration. And you're going to hear more about how she really has made sure to implement multiple strategies that focus on collaboration. We talk a little bit about growing her email list. So with that, I want to make sure that if you haven't already grabbed my growing your email list guide to make sure that you send me a DM on Instagram at Jenny underscore Amelrose, or you can always also go over to the show notes and just grab it there as well. All right, you guys, let's dive in. Hi, Amy. How are you? I'm great, Jenny. Great to be here. Yes. It's so good to see you again. We were talking briefly before we started recording how we met. So finally got to meet a tastemaker and I burst into tears when I saw <laughs> you like a big bumbling baby. I know it was so emotional. I mean, after knowing each other for years, but never seeing each other in person, I mean, it was overwhelming and so exciting. Yes, yes, so good. So, we're going to talk about how to actually continue to grow your online business with collaboration over competition. But before we do that, will you introduce yourself and your business? Sure. So um, my name is Amy Katz, and I'm a blogger at Veggie Save the Day, where I share easy vegan recipes inspired by a Mediterranean diet. And I started my blog in August of 2015 as a hobby, but I quickly saw that I could turn it into a business. And five years ago, I left my full-time job, and now I pursue blogging um, as my career. Excellent. So good. Um, So let's really jump right in. Is collaboration better than competition? Absolutely, it is. Um, I think one of the ways that I was able to grow my business is because I did collaborate and I continue to collaborate with other people, either in my niche or uh, complementary niches. And not only does it help us grow our audience faster, but it's a lot more enjoyable and it benefits our audiences because, um, you know, instead of just having our own little audiences, we can combine forces and grow them into something really big and powerful and meaningful. Yes, so true. And I think when bloggers think about the food industry, right, food bloggers in general, I think that it's probably one of the most competitive niches in that you're trying to all rank for somewhat similar terms because there's only so many recipes that you can potentially come up with that people are searching for. So the fact that you look towards collaboration and providing your audience with a wider array of people um, that are going to provide content, just so important. So what is the difference between competition and collaboration? Well, I like to use um, the example of um, the vegan mini mall in Portland, Oregon, um, because that gives a good example of um, kind of brick and mortar businesses, but it, it gives us an idea of how it can work for online businesses. So this mini mall is like a strip mall where um, there's all different businesses, but they all are in the vegan niche. And so say I went there with one of my friends. Well, my friend might be interested in visiting 
the vegan tattoo shop, whereas I might be interested in visiting the um, clothing store. So while she's getting her tattoo, I'm trying on dresses and jewelry and stuff like that. And then afterwards, we come together and we go to the vegan grocery store and the bakery and we get some soft serve ice cream. So even though we have different interests, and there are different um, specialties for these stores. Um, in the end, it all brings us together and there's something for everyone. So all of these businesses benefit because instead of being located all different places and maybe I get to one of them, you know, one time, but that's it. And then, you know, maybe months later, I go to another one. I can see everything all at the same time and I can pick and choose what I want. So as in terms of how this relates to, say, food bloggers, even though we all have you know, recipes that they may sound similar. Um, we all have our own spin on how we do our recipes. And, you know, we can't all be good at every single thing. So um, like, for example, maybe um, I have a friend who is really good at baking bread. And we know that that baking bread has been one of the um, the trends that's come out of the pandemic. So, um, so say she makes this really good sandwich bread. Well, I like sandwiches, but I'm not a baker. But on my blog, maybe I have some really good um, sandwich topping ideas or sandwich spread or something like that. So when in someone is looking to make a sandwich, you know, it's natural for them to go to her for the bread and then maybe me for the toppings. So if if she and I come together and we say, hey, you know what? Our audiences need to know that they can get everything they need, not just from each one of us individually, but from pooling our efforts and our skills, and they can come and get everything they need from both of us, then not only... Does it help our audience because they get everything they need, but then it helps each of us um, as a business owner as well. So good. Both examples were so well done because you can see how they're serving the same people, but for different pieces of content, yes. uh, which they're serving. So I love those examples. <laughs> um, should you collaborate with competitors? And if so, why? Yeah, I think that um, that we instead of thinking about people in our niche as competitors, um, we can just think of them as other business owners. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with us all growing together. Like, I'm sure you've heard the the quote, a rising tide lifts all boats. And, you know, that actually I found out comes from um, macroeconomics. <laughs> so, but it, it does apply here as well. So if we all improve as a group, then we also all improve as individuals. So I think that it is a great idea to work with your competitors and to see them as more like colleagues rather than competitors. So good. So how have you, do you collaborate or how have you in the past collaborated with the competition? Yeah, this is a great question. Um, there are just so many different ways. And, you know, let's start from the smallest ways. Um, I think that a lot of uh, food and lifestyle bloggers are used to seeing roundup posts and seeing requests for roundups. So the easiest way to collaborate would be if, say, you're writing an article, um, let's use that bread example. So you're writing an article about, you know, how to bake homemade bread, and you have a few bread posts on your site, but you want to fill it in so that you have every type of bread imaginable. So not only sourdough, but you have rye and pumpernickel and cinnamon raisin and all that. So you reach out to other bloggers and say, hey, you know, I noticed you have this recipe on your site. Can I include it in my post? And, you know, of course, you link back to them and um, so that, you know, you're saying this is from this particular blogger and you give them 
proper credit for it. Um, but that is a great way of collaborating. And then when the post comes out, maybe that blogger that you included their recipe from will share that uh, post to their audience. They could pin it on Pinterest. They could share it on Facebook, you know, however they like to do it. They could send it in an email to their audience. So that's like the really easy, simple way that I think most people start with collaborating. But then, you know, there's so many other ways. Um, When you look at the different platforms, you can collaborate, say, for example, on Instagram, Um, they actually have a collaboration feature so that you can do a reel together, or you can go live with someone. Um, So that's a really fun way to introduce each other to your perspective, you know, your individual audiences. Um, There's, you know, you can collaborate through emails. I know that you talk a lot about doing freebie swaps. Um, That's a great idea. Or even just mentioning your friends who, you know, yes, they're your competition, but they're, you know, to collaborate them in an email, like, for example, with that sandwich um, example we had, you know, I could be talking about my sandwich spread, but then I'd say, hey, you know, if you want to have a great bread to go with this, you know, Jenny has a wonderful bread recipe that I've made. And, you know, I think that it goes well um, for this sandwich. So just casual ways to do it. Um, You could collaborate on giveaways, you could do um, free or paid bundles, um, virtual summits. I mean, the sky's the limit. There's just so many different ways. Yes. And what I love most is that I know personally that you've done all of those. That's what makes me the happiest because you don't just do the talk. You have walked it. You have done all of these things to continue to build and to help them build as well. So that's one of my favorite things about this um, episode in particular, because I know that you've employed pretty much every single one of those things that you just said. Yes, that's correct. And and it's it's really enjoyable as well. You know, I feel like not only does it help my business and the collaborators businesses, but I mean it really makes um this this uh online business world a lot more fun and enjoyable because you know, we we all do work mostly from home and on our own, but it's great to feel like you're part of a team as well. It's that sense of community, right? I feel yes. Like we did that even more since the pandemic because we didn't have those conferences to be able to go and actually make connections with people. So having that sense of community in different ways is just so important. What did you find was the most successful collaboration you did for your online business? I would have to say um, putting together uh, bundles is is my favorite way. And it's most successful. Um, it is a little bit more work, but once you get the hang out of it, hang of it, um, you know, it goes, it goes a lot more smoother the second and third time you do it. Um, and you know, I have made some really great friends um, putting together these bundles. And you can do them either a free bundle where your each person is providing um, a free resource. Um, like maybe a free ebook or um, a guide or free training or something like that. But you can also do it as a paid bundle where each person provides something that they normally sell and then you bundle them all together for a special price. And they both work great. Um, You know, I would say um, when people ask like, well, why would I want to do a free bundle? Um, I think that free bundles are particularly great for building your um, email list and, you know, finding people that actually do want to be on your list. Um, You know, a lot of people say, well, once they get the free stuff, they'll just unsubscribe. And I mean, some people, of course, will. But I found that some of my most loyal subscribers have come from these free bundles. Yes. I actually did one in March and it was very, a lot of time consuming. It was definitely work because it's the first time for me to be able to put it together and my team to get all the things that we needed in it. Um, We gave away over a thousand dollars worth of free products. Wow. Uh, And it was just, and I think the part that you said, like you will have those unsubscribes, 
but you, they're not your people. And that's mm-hmm. okay. You want them to unsubscribe if they are not there for your content for the right reasons. Have them unsubscribe rather than sitting there not opening any emails, right? So I do. I, I love, 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 love what you have done. I've watched you do the free ones, the paid ones. Um, and I know that people are often, a lot of bloggers will ask, well, how do I grow my email ads? What should this look like? And I think the first step we always talk about is you got to have that opt-in, that free something that you're giving in exchange. Because for for you in particular, when you did your bundle, were you willing to reach out to people that didn't have an opt-in? No, absolutely not. That's how I found people is I actually went to their websites and I saw, did they actually have something that they were providing that was valuable? Um, You know, and some people had nothing and some people had something that was like a one pager that it just, it wasn't valuable at all. didn't provide anything useful to the, to an audience. So, you know, I didn't even consider those people. Right. Yes. And it blows my mind sometimes how many people still don't have something like that. So I think like the first piece of this is yes, collaborate, but at the same time, go and look and see what your other people in your niche are doing. Look and see what's, who's successful and who have done the things and what is working for them. Don't obviously copy it, make it for what is going to be something that's in line with your content for your audience, but making sure you have that opt-in so that you do provide value not only to your audience, but others in order to collaborate with. I know that, you know, uh, one of the things that always, when you're doing a bundle, the question comes about, well, I don't have a real large list. It's all right. Do you have social media? Do you have other things that you can kind of offer to be part of this? Um, Especially if you're the one that's actually organizing it, that's a great way to build your personal list and to still have other ways that, you can then kind of like you're taking on the brunt of all the work. So seeing this as an opportunity to grow and connect with people that might be a little bit further ahead than you are is not a bad thing. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, when I did um, a free bundle uh, last year before the holidays, you know, I did include some people that had smaller lists, but their freebie that they offered or their, you know, their product that they offered for free was so valuable. And I knew my audience would like it. So, you know, some of them were very successful because they, they're, um, they really took the time to put together, you know, really valuable resource. Like we had uh, one person who put together something that was specific for the holidays that was um, vegan, treats and and desserts and everyone wanted to download that um you know and there was someone else who had something that was um very niche specific too that was about um how to make tofu taste good so people have really creative ideas and even though yeah maybe i have something on my website about tofu i don't have this resource put together the way that she had it and you know so people will always always, um, you know, your, your competition will always have different ways of providing, you know, even if it's the same or similar content, the way they do it is different than the way you would do it. So I loved having people like that in the bundle because, you know, I know my audience absolutely loved it. They said, Oh, these are, these are great resources. And, you know, and then their audience was also exposed to different um, bloggers that maybe they hadn't heard of before. So it's a great way for all of us to grow together. Yes, I could not agree more. And I think that it's just, it, it definitely is one of the best ways for sure to be able to build that form of collaboration and then still be able to also see the benefits from growing your email list. Um, Amy, where are the best places to connect with you? I am on social media everywhere at Veggie Save the Day, and I particularly enjoy Instagram. And you can um, visit my website at VeggieSaveTheDay.com. And if you would like to collaborate with me, uh, maybe you are also a vegan or plant-based a food blogger or in a complimentary niche, you can email me at amykatz at veggiesavetheday.com and I'd love to hear from you.
And you also have quite the opt-ins. You have quite a number of guides so that if people are looking to do Mediterranean um, vegan diet, what exactly, tell me some of the opt-ins that you have. I know you have a couple. Sure. Yeah, I do have a couple. Um, one of the most popular ones is a guide that um, it's called Instant Flavor, the four-part formula for taking your vegan food from dull to delicious. Um, so that's an ebook that you can download. And then I also um, have another popular one that's an email series. Um that is like a mini course. And it's the five secrets to cooking the vegan Mediterranean diet way. Excellent. So good. So definitely go and grab those. Um, as well as to look and see the way that you do your emails. I think one of the best things to do when you are kind of unfamiliar, is get on other people's lists, see what's working. How are they writing their emails? What kind of content are they sending? And Keep, and continuing to nurture you with. It's the best way to really learn. Um, so Amy, I appreciate you so much for taking the time to speak with me and my audience. Oh, thank you. It's been my pleasure, Jenny. Of course. All right. Well, there you have it. Not only did you get to hear how obviously collaboration is better than competition, but you also got to hear all the different ways that Amy is collaborating within her business, within her niche. And if you are a vegan food blogger and you are looking to do get into some collaborations, Amy wants you to reach out to her. So make sure that you do so. As well as if you haven't already grabbed that email list guide, send me a DM that asking for it and I will send it directly to you. And as a reminder, I am still doing content marketing audits for anyone that leaves a rating and review. Just send me a screenshot at Jenny underscore Melrose to my DMs and I will do a content marketing audit of your social media platforms and website. All right, guys, until next time, I will see you all then. 